So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Robot Combat Through the Ages. This year represents 30 years since the first Robot Wars was held at Fort Mason right there on the other side of the city. 30 years. Yeah, I know. You and I have been doing this for 30 years. Uh, I kind of wanted to do this sort of show it off as a timeline. I brought a bunch of builders here that represent all the different times and different competitions through the ages. I'm just going to talk sort of about my initial going to Robot Wars in 1994 on Team Sinister with my teammate Mark Satrakian, calling my best friend Greg to come down and check it out, telling him, hey, maybe next year you should build a robot yourself. That's right, yep. So Greg builds a law machine and comes back, and we start to all compete together, doing Robot Wars through 94 to... 98? 98. Some legal troubles are happening amongst all that time frame. Correct. There's a book you can all read about that era called uh, Gearheads, The Turbulent Rise of Robotic Sports by Brad Stone. It's actually a fascinating read. It just talks about how an entrepreneur can start something as cool as robot combat only to have it crushed by capitalism America. It's just like, check it out. By big corporation. Um, and then during that process, when we didn't have a place to go fight robots, you and your cousin Trey gave us that venue with BattleBots in 1999. Correct. So, uh, you know, as Robot Wars unfortunately turned into ashes because of the legal trouble, um, and it actually had sold a license to do the UK version of Robot Wars in the UK, and it was a huge hit. It was this fantastic, awesome show in the UK that was hugely popular and, and spread all over the world, but it started in San Francisco. So the San Francisco building community was like, what the hell is going on? So um, my cousin Trey and I, we just thought, well, let's start having events. First, we did things under freeway over overpasses, which I do not recommend. That's very dangerous. Don't do that. Um, we did it out in the abandoned Air Force Base at Hamilton in Nevada. Don't do that either. That's also very dangerous. Police will come. It's not good. Um, and then finally, we got an investor who gave us some money to build a battle box arena, which was this giant 48-foot steel Lexan cage where you could safely fight robots, big robots. We eventually got up to 300 and something, 350 pounds for the super heavyweights. We've now gone down to 250 pounds for the heavyweights. But you could fight these things safely, sell tickets, have a show, build a sport, and eventually, oh my God, have a TV show. And then Gary, you came into the season. Yeah, so I started watching that TV show uh, in the year it's 2000 on uh, Comedy Central, right? So um, where I was working before that, um, when Robot Wars was still a thing, um, there was a bunch of people who wanted to start up a team. Um, and I had some RC car experience and I was in electronics. Uh, but they were still working out the artistic direction of the team. And I said, well, when you guys start building, give me a call. <laughs> but then I think that's probably the Robot Wars that didn't happen. Uh, then I started watching Comedy Central BattleBots. And I'm probably what, uh, one of the people who they call South Park newbies. <laughs> because, hey, uh, you know, BattleBots is on after South Park. And so people that watch South Park, this, you know, discovered battle bots. But then, you know, I would watch the show and yell at the TV all the time. Because the robots would always go the wrong way and they wouldn't hit each other. It's like, come on, you guys. And I, I had my RC car experience. I knew I would be able to drive one of these things. But in order to compete, I had to learn how to build one. So, how did I learn how to build one? Well, you have to remember this was before YouTube, this was before Facebook groups. Paper catalogs. Yeah. Delphi forums. <laughs> Delphi forum, right. Yeah, so basically all we had were uh, the Delphi forums and uh, guys like Kristen Carver and Jim Smentowski who were willing to spend the time to make websites and give away all their secrets. And I would just copy what they did. <laughs> and like right. Dan Danknick and all those yeah, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, great artist steel, I guess. <laughs> so we sort of work our way through, we're, we're on Comedy Central, following South Park, we have... The show is kicking ass. 
five seasons? Yeah, it's five seasons. We do two seasons a year. The show is like the third best show on, you know, it was like South Park, The Man Show, and BattleBots. And then... Good, good and company. Then, uh, Comedy Central has like this, the, the, the landscapes as they often do in TV shift, and they want to start just doing one, you know, reality shows start coming in, and they want to do more, just stand, get back to stand up. And so our show, they've moved it to a Saturday night, the ratings go down, they finally just said, well, sorry guys, see you later. So we, we didn't want to die, we wanted to keep going. So we're desperately trying to get the show back on TV, which took 12 years, put a pin in that. Um, but in the meantime, we said, okay, let's start a nonprofit because kids love this sport. When kids see these guys building their robots, they're like, oh my God, I want to do that so bad. And so we started BattleBots IQ, which was a nonprofit, 501c3, and we did it mostly in Florida, where kids from these public schools, private schools, would build these bots, uh, middleweights, 125 pounds, and kick the crap out of each other and learn a lot about engineering, learn really valuable engineering schools. And I think, Mark, you were in that program, weren't you? I was in the first one, yeah. Uh, so I was just kind of like Gary, seeing it on TV uh, as a 17-year-old, and I didn't really have any teammates or any friends interested in building things. Uh, I barely caught the end of the Comedy Central season in 2002, and I just wanted more. And when uh, Greg and, and Nola and Trey came to me and said, I want to start a high school thing, I said, I, I've got to do that. So, And it was more attainable for me because I was kind of in the southeast already. Like Greg said, it was going to be happening in Florida. And uh, I attended that, and that sort of set in motion a bunch of things that have impacted my life. Basically, everything I have in my life is attributable in some way back to that moment, uh, you know, doing BattleBots and meeting all these great people. And I eventually uh, started my own robot company with somebody that I met at BattleBots. And uh, it, it's been a really amazing journey. And I can't recommend enough, if you haven't talked to any, any of the guys over in the BattleBots group and you want to get into it, it's such an amazing community. You just got to start talking and just say, I want to build something. And they'll start giving you parts. That's how much they want you to be involved. It's a really good crew. So during the same time, as we're kind of moving forward, BattleBots IQ is starting, but also Dave Calkins is here in Southern Cal or Northern California starting RoboGames. Gary, you yeah, definitely well, dove deep into that <laughs> since we no longer like have like BattleBots. You're like a champ at RoboGames. Well, yeah. It's a, uh, uh, eight times, Dave, I believe. Dave started RoboGames, and uh, he's just used to hold them in you know the birthplace of you know the same place as robot wars at fort mason and you know i had to build robot so i went and competed there um you know other people would come up to me and wanted to learn how i helped the guy jim perry build his first robot and then he came to me and said hey i got a sponsor let's build a heavyweight because dave started having this combats cup competition and when he first did it it was a ten thousand dollar winner take all first prize it's like, those were big money back then and then jim was like why aren't we in this I said, well we don't have a heavyweight it's like, okay you design it find a sponsor we'll build it and that's when i built original sin and um over the years i think i've racked up uh, eight gold medals with original sin nice and bunny you were deeply involved with robo games i was i started I, I that was my very first big robot like like where i got destroyed by ray billings and last right so well, it was a mortician because i was in the middleweight class um robo games was this huge thing it wasn't just about robot combat it was about innovation in all the different fields and you would see these new and amazing techs introduced there was this one big suit which was would help people lift things and there was just so many things that came about from robo games that you could see and interact with and touch and, and inspire you to become whatever you wanted to be and not just uh, it, it fully encompassing everything not just combat robotics but right. it, it was like this feeling like I, I, like Mark, I had no one that was around me that wanted to hear about or talk about building or anything. But when you got to RoboGames, you walked through these doors and it was like this weight was lifted off you because everyone in there wanted to build and make and uh, do these amazing things. And it just made you feel like you were home with... Because you know, RoboGames wasn't just combat. I mean, you had soccer, you had Magellan, which was track sumo horses. Robots. You had sumo. Art, you, a static art robots, like yeah, that one... You had the best robots, bar robots, bar for building robots. drinks for you. I know Mark and Paul made a, a bar robot at one point that was... Yeah, bar bartending robots, you know. They're a niche category, but very fun. Uh, 
Lots of motors and things come from BattleBots and can be tied very closely to robot Lots combat. of other fun. The rest of the world is just catching up with this. We were we were the OGs, you know, <laughs> getting robots to bring us drinks. And also at this time, myself and a few others were running ant weight competitions called Zozbots, 16 out robots. And Matt, you were three or four, maybe five, four or five years old, competing. Yeah, yeah. I mean. My origin story is kind of, it's a little bit different because my dad saw BattleBots on Comedy Central when I was like three years old maybe. And the following year, I think in what, 2001, season three, he went and did it. He did season three, season four, season five, and I was just like tiny kid. But I immediately loved it. And uh, you know, he would take me to Robo Games when BattleBots was off the air. So I have lot. photos of Matt and Jason growing up with me. So I, they started, you know, <laughs> hip high, and then you just see that through the years, his mother Debbie would always make us take a photo, and she's like, "When you're older, you'll appreciate what I'm doing for you." <laughs> and, and 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 you just see them grow, and then all of a sudden, he's taller than me. I don't know when that happened. <laughs> Go back down. But yeah, he was saying Sawsbots was like a damn weight one pound robot competition. And I think that's probably where I drove my first ever robot. I'm a but yeah, and then after that, like, uh, my dad would compete in robot games, and I'd help him build the bigger robots. Like, it'd be there with Gary and Bunny and Mark. I'm a, but uh, Mark used to run the tree for robo games, and he made these amazing, beautiful displays to create the ready, set, go. Yeah, I, and just, I just wanted to be so involved with robot fighting and battle bots that I decided to get to know everybody and start writing my own software that would manage events. And then I was traveling all around the world to all these different events doing the software and managing the tournament. And that's where I got to know everybody here on stage. The builders at the same time, also, also building a very early version of Ice Wave. <laughs> and I uh, probably brought that to Robo Games a few times. Yeah, but, it's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah and, that, and, and Ice Wave started at IQ. You know, to go Which to then the leads us into 2015. ABC comes calling. Yes. And BattleBots comes back on the air. Yes, we had been out there pitching BattleBots for like 12 years. We were with like all these different executive producers, production company types. At one point, we were with James Cameron and Mark Burnett, like the king of reality TV and the king of, you know, cinema. And I will never forget, Mark, uh, James Cameron, after this big meeting we had, takes me into the corner in the hallway, pins me and says, if I'm doing this show, it better be fucking good. <laughs> and, then, and then we had this disastrous meeting where it, a picture was painted, and this was to the Discovery Channel, who turned us down at first, and, uh, said, um, we're gonna have flying robots that shoot bombs and their flames, incinerators and drones and, and synchronicity. And it was like, oh my God, we can't do that. That's not gonna work. Uh, but eventually, we hooked up with this company called Whale Rock, uh, Chris Cowan, uh, Aaron Catling, our awesome uh, showrunner, which actually, we, we got that relationship through Jamie Heidman of Mythbusters. He hooked us up with those guys. And that was a match made in heaven. And we sold the show to ABC and they picked it up, which is like, whoa, they picked it up. What the hell? And uh, we did two seasons there. Unfortunately, the second season didn't do so hot because it was the election year. Our show got preempted. There was the Olympics. It got preempted. I, I like so to also like, oh think God. it's because they tortured us with Uptown Funk nonstop the first oh, yeah, we, year. <laughs> and you know that it can only last so long. Exactly. And then um, we were off again. We're like, oh, crap. You know, but that, but that had rekindled the fire, that show on ABC, to bring in a new generation of builders. And then eventually, um, Discovery Science of all people bought reruns for that ABC show, and it was the best ratings that Discovery Science ever had for a repeat. So that made Discovery then say, wait a second, we've heard about this thing, we turned it down, let's actually, let's green light it, and now we've been on Discovery, we've done like, I think, what are we, five seasons? Seven seasons in total in the reboot, and now we're just waiting for season eight. Yeah. Any, any, any networks out there? Sorry. <laughs> so during all of this, we have a new robot that shows up named Tantrum. Yep, yeah, it was an exciting time. We, season six, champions. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a journey for us. We, we joined in uh, early, uh, looking up to the people in that direction. Uh, for me and a lot of people on our team, we started watching the show, we wanted to be on it, and eventually we had the resources and ability to be able to come on and do that. And so we were able to show up, uh, and the process to do that now is a little different. Like you can go to the uh, Proving Grounds that they run now in Vegas, they have the permanent show. So if you want to follow in our footsteps, you're able to do that now by going to the Proving Grounds and do that uh, to get onto the show. Uh, 
which sorry if I preempted your uh, your timeline here. Uh, but it's been a journey. It's been a really fun it's time. Uh, oh. Nick will be able to answer that later oh, in a Nick, second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When we talk about proving grounds in Robo Games. Yeah. Since yeah. Nick so. won his last two Robo Games, won his proving ground, but we haven't had a season of BattleBots to be able to put him on yet. Wait, they didn't just win the proving ground. He, he literally like flung the other robot, which was Triton, which is this beast of a robot with a ginormous like anchor as a weapon. And he flung it up into the uh, rafters and like you could see these just massive sparks coming off of it. The Lexan, which is an inch and a quarter thick, actually has a, a wave goes through it, almost like an earthquake. It was such a huge hit that man yeah, did. Yeah, I, I did not expect that to happen, but it was really awesome. But yeah, Proving Grounds is an amazing place where you can test your battle bot without being on the show, but still get really good testing time in. So someone like me that bought, uh, built a battle bot after season seven, in the off season, I can go there, test my robot, and figure out all the kinks before I actually go on TV and fight. You're not supposed to fight the robot yourself, you know. Yeah, I lost that fight, but um, it's okay. <laughs> And so, in the off season, I've just been competing at Robo Games. Fortunately, it went pretty well for me. I'm two-time champion so far. And then, yeah, so I'm just waiting for the next season. Yeah. To it's funny. I remember like five or six years ago, seeing you compete at Robo Games in like a junior and weight competition. Yeah. So that's like the one pound fighting robots for kids, for anyone under 18. And if you're under 18, you're forced to compete in that category. And you were just like annihilating everyone. I'm like, why aren't they letting them compete with the adults? <laughs> and then the second you turn 18 or a little bit older, you come with a heavyweight and win first place. So it's like, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's been a wild journey. I, I, I came in 2018 to Robo Games, built a robot out of a cutting board, and then since then I got the bug. And after that, um, the reboot came for BattleBots, and that just made me even more obsessed. And then it's just fired out of control now, the heavyweight. <laughs> so talking about the small robots again. There's also another big event on the East Coast, NHRL, which, yep. Alex, you've been a huge part of, Matt's competed at. <laughs> yeah, when we're not building the heavyweight robots at 250 pounds, uh, there's tons of local competitions that you can find all across the globe, but one that's really shining on the East Coast here is NHRL, uh, the National Havoc Robot Fighting League. Uh, and we've been competing there for a couple of years now, uh, and we're trying new stuff, trying some weird stuff after season seven, we decided, why don't we try to make a good flamethrower? And that was that was my uh, contribution to the world, is I think we made a good flamethrower. Melting robots has been a lot of fun. And it also shows an evolution in the sport uh, that both at BattleBots and NHRL, the arenas have to get better and better and better because people like us are pushing the limits pretty hard and dropping the lights like you're, there's there's oozing like plastic coming from the ceiling from the heat from like dutch oven which is my flamethrower robot uh and then people are like you know getting stuck in the plastic in the in the polycarb so so they're they're having to upgrade the arenas if you try to put the current heavyweights like manta here in in a battle bot from or battle box sorry from 2000 or even before that the very season one back in the comedy central days it's not a good time. Everyone, you know, the insurance people would come running for that guy over there. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Be safe. So, uh, so yeah, there's like tons of these events that you can go to and, and it's really expanding and uh, opening the horizon. Building a 250 pound battle bot is a lot of resources. So starting small, like, you know, like this guy did and, and getting your feet wet in the community and then building robots is great. And I recommend it to anybody out there who's interested. Yeah. And the cool thing about combat robots is like you can start small and you can get good pretty fast. Like there have been people who third, second year, you know, went from last place to semifinals, finals, quarterfinals. You can get good shockingly quick if you uh, put in the work. I will say that one of the things that being here, a lot of people have asked when they come up to our booth is they say, how do I get involved? And obviously now we have the small robots, but when we started and you guys started, it was a lot of, you could just go to the junkyard and buy something or, or find something for free, build a robot around it, and it was very easy, it was very accessible, and a lot of people had this uh, this idea that, that BattleBots maybe not ex as, access as accessible as it was back when we started, but thankfully, you know, competitions like the smaller robot ones, like NHRL and these other ones around, are a great way to get started and get to know the group of builders that are involved. Yeah, and, the, and I like to think that BattleBots is building tall, NHRL is building wide, and in terms of like how they're building out their, their, their groups and it's, it's, it's really 
Uh, nice to see all these competitors, new faces at these events, uh, NHRL, for example, and, and it is just as exciting, right? Like that's one thing I do like is that you, you get different physics at different scales. At the 250 pounds, you see just robot parts flying in the air. At the small weights, the, the physics mean that the robots are flying in the air. And so it's, it's really fun, it's really entertaining. I recommend anybody go check it out. Check out NHRL, check out SCAR and the Southern California Attack Robotics. There, there's a website, I think, called robotcombatevents.com, which has a, it's a worldwide directory of every robot combat event. You can go on there, see what's close to your hometown or maybe even in your hometown, but definitely go check it out. I have an event on July 27th that you can come out and compete in. It's a great plant weight class. Uh, just get a 3D printer or have a friend 3D print for you and come out on July 27th. And, and uh, Where is it, buddy? It's in uh, Sunnyvale at Makers Nexus. We only have about eight minutes left. Are there any questions you have for these amazing panelists? And while we wait for questions, you know, anyone who wants to come out to Las Vegas to try their hand at uh, BattleBots with their 250 robot can come out to what we have called Proving Ground, which is what Nick was talking about. Very great time. It's awesome. Yeah, you also, even if you're, if you're not a builder and you want to be an aspiring builder or you have a five-year-old aspiring builder like me, uh, I'm going to be there in two weeks. I'm going to bring my kids because it's a great, just a fun time. It's a great way to see what it's all about and get the action that you see on TV without, uh, you know, while you're just hanging out in Vegas. Uh, it's like going to see Blue Man Group, but it's fighting robots. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, what's very interesting is I didn't even know BattleBots was on TV because I haven't consumed normal media since, you know, 10, 12 years ago. So, if Discovery Channel or whoever you weren't on TV again, would you attempt to try to go the traditional media route or would you try to invest more in like YouTube, Twitch, you name it? Uh, I, could, I could not hear the question so well, but it was basically, I think, I th if I understand the question, I think the future for BattleBots is to still stay on television, but also definitely, definitely explore uh, the YouTube streaming type content. So right now I think we were so close to 2 million followers on YouTube channel. So please follow us and get us there if you haven't followed us already. Sorry. Um, but that we're definitely in, in September. It's good you ask that because in September, October, November of this year in Vegas, we're going to invite the, the pros to come and do little mini tournaments and then put them on YouTube exclusively and try that as an experiment to see what kind of audience we can get, what kind of sponsors we could bring to the table. And maybe that's a business model away from television that could work in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, wow. Roa Combat League Nationals last year was at Roa Games, but they're not returning. So, and I did hear they may be going to Las Vegas at the BattleBots Arena. Any news about that? I don't know, I don't know those guys. But at BattleBots, it's just basically BattleBots. The BattleBots thing in Vegas is, 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 at this point, exclusively BattleBots. Matt, do you know the answer to the question? The, the, the Robot Combat uh, League is the um, uh, RobotCombatEvents.com uh, championship. Like, it's the one for uh, all the events that are local in the whole world to uh, go. It's their yeah. finals. Mainly know? like the West Coast finals. You have like Mark Mason's events, the SCAR events, combining with War, which is Rob Farrow. So it's kind of like Seattle and Southern California combine like our highest ranked robots and all the West Coast comes pretty much. But yeah, I don't know where that will be next year though. We'll see. I have uh, two questions. My first one is when do you think the next Battle Boss season will come out? And the, sec the second one is uh, <laughs> what, uh, will you guys be staying after for autographs? Absolutely, we'll yes. be staying for autographs. To the second question, yes. Yes. You could meet all these people and have an autograph for sure. Uh, for the question about when it's coming back, so I don't want to jinx anything, but it's been it's been a tough time in TV lately. There was the Screen Actors Guild strike, there was the writer strike, COVID still is reeling through the industry, and our network Discovery uh, merged with Warner Brothers, and then when that happens, oftentimes the executives who greenlight shows and, and champion your show get fired. So our our executives got fired. Um, so 
We, though, have been exploring every opportunity to bring BattleBots back for World Championship uh, 8. And I don't want to jinx anything, but there are definitely uh, lights at the end of very many tunnels that may, uh, if everything goes well, which sometimes it doesn't do, but sometimes it does, uh, we could be looking at filming early next year, 2025. Just so everyone just pray and just like put that out, put that out to the universe. So the, the part you have to understand about getting a new show or getting your show to another network is you have to go through the whole process of teaching those executives what we are about and bringing and getting somebody to become your new champion. These are not quick things that happen within the entertainment industry. It takes a while. So that's why everybody's been like, well, where's his name? They are working their butts off to make it happen. It's, it's the number one priority. I get emails all the time going, oh, you're just in Vegas now doing Destructathon. You don't love the World Champ. No, that's not true. The World Championship 8 is the number one priority, lifeblood of BattleBots, lifeblood of the sport, lifeblood of everything. It's our huge, it's our number one priority to get that going as soon as possible. Thank you. What, what, that's really fun. Uh, what building techniques or material uses from Comedy Central do you think needs a resurgence? Sorry, I didn't totally hear that. What building techniques or material usage from Comedy Central age do you think needs a resurgence? Like foam, Bring back Megadon. <laughs> just bring it back. I just, you get, get, get you Mark Satrakian on this right now. Mark, I have a Mark's meeting. Get Mark Satrakian back. The meeting of the Mark's I think like- That robot right there on the poster. I want that one. I want that one. I think the idea, uh, you know, that I would like to see the most is going back to that junkyard era, where where there's maybe not a lot of money being poured into these motors and batteries and things like that, and we can we can say, let's just all agree that we're not going to spend more than a couple hundred dollars on each robot, and see what we can come up with and be unique in that respect, rather than the race to the bottom of like the, the strongest armor so, and the biggest battery. You want to make a lemons leak for, yeah. for robot combat? Yeah, I like exactly. it. I like I that. Like to That's see good. That. Yeah. I mean, at Comedy Central, it wasn't only that they were cheaper, but a lot of people just didn't know it was really good yet. So like some people came up with like a couple of, you know, Apex designs, like your biohazards and your hazards and like maybe your Ziggo. But uh, those days, like those designs still exist, but they're like middle of the pack. So another thing that a lot of people don't know about the Comedy Central era was that there were 600 robots showing up to a two week long competition. And- It was the wild one. You could, yeah, but, you, but what that means is basically anybody gets in. And uh, the problem with that is of course, when you're trying to film that for TV, I'm sure Greg can say- It was insane. It's difficult. <laughs> so, you know, we've had to kind of make some modifications along the way so that we can actually have a TV show that people find entertaining. But, uh, you know, that was part of the thing that we had going for us when we did it was there were, basically you apply and you get in. So, Go to one of the smaller events and, and then you can sort of, uh, or the proving grounds where you can get in easily and then, then you'll make your way to the TV show. It's like NHRL is kind of similar to how BattleBots was in the Comedy Central era right now because you are getting the 400 robots show up. You are getting super crazy things show up. There's no, like no one is stopping you from submitting your design. You can bring whatever you want as long yeah. as you follow the rules. And there yeah. are also extremes in drawing paint. So if you exactly. to have 300 robots in one day, <laughs> it's a single competing. So it's, it's been a lot of fun, but yeah. I think we have one more question we can do. And otherwise, uh, you can get some autographs and sign these, you know, have these people sign some stuff for you. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.